bitch don't kill my vibe. Bitch don't kill my vibe. I can feel your energy from two planets somewhere. I got my drink, I got my music, I was sharing what to do. Bitch don't kill my vibe. Bitch don't kill my vibe. Bitch don't kill my vibe. That's the mic. Check, testing, one, two, three. For every life you save, there's a million new ways to die. Awesome. Hey, this is Red Bay coming to you live from the Comedy Store. How are you guys doing today? <laughs> this is Tail Tony. Give it up for Tony Hinchcliffe. Yay. Hi, everybody. How's it going? Yeah. Excited to be back. As always, so fun. We're here another fun Monday night. Over 20-some comedians signed up for tonight's show to do a minute hangout and See what happens. Here we are. Uh, fuck yeah, it's been uh, our last episode was with Marin and Benson at the LA Podfest. Ow, ow. This is the first episode following that. That was a lot of fun. A lot has happened since then. Hell yeah. I died. Uh, it's true. You, you missed uh, last week because you had a Selma, Selma high or Salmonella poisoning. Uh, <laughs> Bad chicken? Yeah, bad chicken. So Friday night, I ate uh, El Pollo Loco, which is, uh, they get their chicken from Foster Farms. And Foster Farms is closing all these plants right now because all these people are, like, getting sick and stuff. But there's no government to actually for, oversee all this. <laughs> so people are just dying from this fucking shitty chicken. And so I ate it right before Podcast Fest. Friday night, everything fine. Friday around 6 in the morning, fire out of my ass, my nose, my mouth. It was the worst fucking five days of food poisoning I've ever so had. So when you before. always make fun of me for being a vegan, you factor in that not only does that never happen to me, but I haven't had like a cold in about two years. Well, you can get that shit from, you can get crap from kale. You know, you can die from kale. Right yeah, I could. I could really, I hear about that You'd all the time. You'd be the biggest pussy ever and you die from kale. I've heard of so many people. The new kale overdose outbreak that's yeah. happening. There's a lot of bacteria in kale unless you cook it. Just like chicken. But yeah, so. <laughs> that's some scary talk. And speaking of scary, that makes me think of Halloween. And okay. we have some exciting news about Halloween this year, everybody. Yeah. Ow. The segue. We're going to be in San Diego. We're going to have a Halloween show at the American Comedy Co. It's going to be me, Tony Hinchcliffe, Sam Tripley. And there's a lot of special guests that we've already booked, uh, secret guests. And uh, we're even talking to the, uh, the old Jew, Ari Shafir's. Oh, wow. He, he might be in town, so. Holy moly. So it's going to be a good party. It's uh, AmericanComedyCo.com. And then, uh, where were you? You, you were, you, you've been, like, is there anybody here from Windy City Weekend right here? Yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. That's awesome. You missed all that. I know. I got booked uh, last second to go to Seattle and work there Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights. And then I traveled all day on Sunday to get back here yesterday. But, um, and I can't believe that I missed Windy City Weekend. It's, of all the, of all the gigs that I had, because I just found out that I have a shit ton of parking tickets that I'm going to contest. But let's just say that if you got, if you get a few 60-some dollar parking tickets and you forget to pay those, it gets to, well, I guess you, you get guilty. So when you get offered something, like there was a part of me, even though no comedian should ever turn down the gig, there's a part of me that's like, no, I'm not going to take the deal. I'm going to stay for Windy City Weekend. But it was cool. It was cool seeing them. Like, because I don't know if you ever saw the movie Windy City. Either. I'm sure you. Have. I'm obsessed. Yeah, it's, it's one of my favorite movie. movies but, ever. But seeing it with a that's was, what killed me is that I'm one of its biggest fans. I obsess about it. It was like watching Rocky, Rocky Horror Picture Show. And then and then like at the beginning or at the front, you know, uh, Scary Perry is sitting there in the front row, and people are just fucking with him. Like I give him like bags of popcorn and like pouring it all over and stuff like that. <laughs> Wrapping them up with toilet paper and spraying them with water pistols. It was fucking I can't crazy. believe I missed it. I can't wait to... I, I hope there's some way to be able to watch that. I don't know. Eventually, hopefully. hopefully. Um, fuck yeah. As always, guess who's here, everybody? Our head of security. The one and only Iron Patriot. <laughs> Always something a little bit different with them. Uh, Patriot, how have things been? 
I'm glad to be here on Columbus Day with you, Tony. Oh, it is Columbus. You know, it was 521 years ago that Columbus first landed in the Bahamas. It must have been a scary voyage for him, Tony. Why? Why, why is that? Because he didn't know if he was going to see land. It's kind of like this show. We're on a skill. We're on a scary journey with uh, Kill Tony. We don't know if we'll ever see land. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> anyway, Tony, I had fun at the podcast festival. <laughs> Mark Barron really did like me. He said I could come over to his garage anytime. I didn't hear him say that to you, Tony. <laughs> He even said that I could come and look at his Jessica, his girlfriend Jessica's feet. Yes, yes, it's true. You know it's true. I'll, I'll take you if you're nice, Tony. I'll take you with me. As soon as I get time up for my busy schedule, you know I'm a very busy man. Yoga on Tuesdays, Wednesdays Parks and Recreation, Thursday Bingo. Friday <laughs> Wednesday you work for Parks and Rec, but Thursday's bingo? Uh, yeah, I'm a busy, I, I do yoga too. I got, um, Wait, I got bingo with where? You uh, play bingo? I do meetings with Scientology on Saturday. What? Oh, God. Are you a Scientologist? <laughs> <laughs> wow. We did get to meet him. It was our first time meeting him without the costume, and he used my uh, hotel room at the LA Pod Fest to change into his outfit. And you did leave a sock, by the way. And I was going to bring it, but it was so crunchy. No, that wasn't mine. Stop it. <laughs> that couldn't have been mine. I, I, I took inventory when I got home. Everything was with me. That must have been it somebody was... else's creepy sock. Oh, then it's somebody left. <laughs> Red Band, there's something I want to say to you, Red Band. What? I saw that picture with you of Jimmy Kimmel at the 10-year anniversary of Windy City Heat, which, by the way, is a film I love. I love Scary Perry. I saw the picture with you. Back in May of 2012, I was on the Jimmy Kimmel show in my old Iron Man suit for the premiere of The Avengers. Scarlett Johansson was on the show. We had a contest where we drove, where we drew T-shirts. The Hulk was on there. Chewbacca, SpongeBob, Juan Diego, my good friend that plays Captain America. <laughs> SpongeBob is there. <laughs> the weirdest name dropper in the city. <laughs> Spongebob, Chewbacca, it was all the Hollywood and Highland people? Yes, yes, it was the characters and we were there, it was a, it was a good, we got paid union scale, and they even played it again and we got paid the, another check, so it was, it was nice, I liked it. It was, it was, it was a fun, it was a fun time, but um, what's been going on with you, Tony? Well, uh, we sort of just talked about that. Uh, I heard, I, and another thing, I heard you on the podcast with Tom Segura and his wife, your mom's house, and you would have loved this, guys, if you want to listen to this, because this was just done last week. Tony's mom is on this show. They called to Ohio, Youngstown, and this woman, she is funny. You're going to see where he got all his, his uh, wits about. Because this woman, she's real cool, but if you don't pay her on time, that's when she turns ugly. There you go. Uh, yeah. So you uh, sent me a song, uh, as you do sometimes. Yeah. And, and you know why I'm doing this? Because at the podcast festival, Tony kept saying, holy moly. Do you remember that? No. You kept saying, if you go back and watch the tape, you kept saying, holy moly. And I have a song by the same name. So I said, I thought it was time to do it. My, this is my father's favorite song. My, my, my dad, Bubba, in Mississippi. He loves this song. All right. Holy moly. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'm giving it. Come on, brothers. Everybody shake. Hey, go. Woo! the south side of Chicago, there's a lot going down, there's a car girl, her name's Tony, she does some messing around, and I saw her, holy moly, holy moly, holy moly, I'm the road just a car girl, from the south side, holy moly, holy moly, I'm the road. On her pillow So sweet and lovely With a cute little note It said call me My name's Tony She left a number that was all that she wrote And I saw her Holy moly Holy moly Holy moly On the road just to call girl From the south side Holy moly Holy moly On the road I'm saying moly <laughs> Thank you, thank you all right, get up there. Yeah, Nobody was clapping there. You said that. <laughs> <laughs>
we can have a bit of people that decided what they wanted to yeah, do yet. Yeah, let, let, me, let me explain a little bit about that song. That song is about a call girl named Tony on the south side of Chicago. It's an imaginary girl. It, it has no race specific. It could be Tony Badger, it could be Tony Collette, it could even be Tony from Captain and Tennille. So it's an imaginary call girl. I told you I used to live in Chicago. That's on the south side, Tony. It's the Windy City, too. Yes, yes, it's a, I'm tying it all together in this show. Tony, wow, there you go. Yes, I feel, I feel Tony's like, a hooker is what he's trying to say, uh, right? Yeah. Did, yeah. you, did you write that in your Dirty Crabber days? Yeah, yeah, that's one of, nine, so another that's one of my classic hits. <laughs> How many songs did Dirty Crabber have? Uh, I just started, I got a lot more. I like that song, by the way. That's I think that's, that's my father, Bella's favorite song. I told well, you. He, he really noticed, when when he hears like, that, he starts dancing. He'll just he'll start doing this Bella strut. He'll just go like that. What I noticed <laughs> about all the Dirty Crabber songs is that uh, is that you you get it after about like 40 seconds of each song. <laughs> like, I can't imagine listening to that for three and a half minutes. Like, I know song. This is just... <laughs> Right. And you always have like a little cute dance break in between choruses. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh. and a solo. I can shake your thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just bringing back a lot of memories. I appreciate you guys letting me do these tunes. It's, it's good. It reminds me kind of of the President's United States of America also. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a lot of influences. Some people say I, I sound like Frank Zappa. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so that's the Iron Patriot. <laughs> Uh, here with us, as always, to make sure nothing gets too crazy. He has a suit made out of whatever the fuck. It's super heavy and crazy. Fiberglass. Fiberglass. ABS plastic in the middle. The heaviest fiberglass ever. Yes, yeah. He has to take the bus here because he can't sit down. So, <laughs> he has to take the buses because he can't sit down in this $5,000 uh, outfit that yes. he bought himself. Yes, yeah. Um, it takes him an hour to get ready, and... He's always with us. He's never missed a show. The Iron Patriot, everybody. Yes, yes. Um, so uh, now that we, we know what goes on here, uh, a bunch of comedians get to come on and do 60 seconds, and uh, then we talk to them about uh, what happened and maybe who they are and whatever the fuck. Um, so what do you say we get this thing started by bringing up our guests tonight? Both of them very good friends of mine, two of the funniest people I know, uh, in no particular order. Um, the fighting pride of Kansas, everybody. I mean, holy moly, this guy is hilarious. Uh, check him out on uh, his show, The Rick Ingram Experience, now on YouTube. The one and only Rick Ingram is in the house, everybody. He was here during episode one. He was the only guest on the show. And this is his first return since the pilot episode, when it was actually called Hinchcliffe's Notes. Yeah. I was gonna say, he said he's never missed a episode. Right. I've never seen him in my life. That's true. That's that's right. You're the only guest that hasn't had the Patriot experience. Yeah. I'm glad, Rick, we can do it right this time. You came back, we do it the right way. I want to say something to you, Rick. Oh, uh, wait. And also, our other guest. Um, just when you think it couldn't get any better, there's two guests. Uh, I've seen him. Uh, this is one of my oldest, best pals. We've been roommates. Uh, one of my great buddies, you know him from his appearances on Mad TV and Comedy Central. Clear hands together for Sandy Dan. Mad TV wasn't Mad TV. Mad TV? It was Mad TV. A long time ago. Wow. For 45 seconds. When did Mad TV? Now I'm confused. I don't know. That's interesting. As far as Not anyone in here knows, <laughs> it never existed. <laughs> Oh, fuck yeah. So Sandy, this is your first time in the show, and this is Rick's first time with the Patriots. I had a, I had a brief cameo on the show with Polly yeah. several weeks ago. Oh yeah, that's right. Lucky. That was killed only 13. <laughs> <laughs> with Doug Benson, they, they made a surprise appearance at the end. That was very special. Do you have a, do you have like a card catalog system in that suit? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I need it. I need a, I need a clock so I know what time it is. <laughs> it's one of the main uh, issues with most of the Iron Man movies yeah. is he can never figure out what time it is. <laughs> All this so, fancy universe. Everything is exactly the way it is in the movie, which is cool. Sandy, can I say something to you? I was, re I was reading about you today. I see you're from Detroit. You must be happy because your football team is doing pretty good sure. so far, first yeah. place. Um, I first saw you on Ice House Chronicles number 55 back in December of 2012. Wow. I really like your Polly Shore impersonation. Oh, it's thank you. funny as shit. I like a raper that knows his dates. <laughs> could, you, 
Did you do that voice for the remainder of this show? Oh, you you want me to do it the entire time? Well, as much as you can, because I love it. It, it makes me laugh. <laughs> it's, it's all about him with this. Uh, this so what did he say right now? Dude, it's a whole thing with you. <laughs> dude, it's, it's not happening, dude. It's gotta be. It's gotta be what? It's gotta be organic. <laughs> Oh, he just gave you the laser beam. <laughs> His left hand, that means Is that, that like getting the light? <laughs> Polly got the light from Iron Patriot. Oh, Rick, I want to say something to you real quick before we begin the show. I am dying to Rick, hear it. Rick, yep. this is what I want to say about you. Um, Wait, about listen, me? Are you saying it about me or to me? No, no, to you. I listened to Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank, well, and I was amazed about your story. From the age of 23 to 30, you had severe stomach pain. You are. You have a high tolerance of pain, Rick. I, I could not believe that story you went through. They finally diagnosed you with diabetes, but they so did true. not know what the hell was going on. You went through several doctors. Is How did you make it through that exposition? <laughs> he just provides backstory, which is very Iron Man-like also. I love that of all the research you did on Rick, uh, the thing you wanted to talk to him about with the th his stomach pains that he had. You know, one time he projectile vomited seven feet in the air when he was with his mama. Yeah. What? This guy, he knows a lot about people's moms, which he is uncomfortable. Does, he does his research. He's a big fan yeah, of Yeah, I want you to meet my mom someday, Tony. I, yeah, oh, I think we all want that. Yeah. I think it's Dude, fair to say. Started what this whole what superhero day. is she? <laughs> She's the super crab mama. I want to meet your father, Spaniel. What? What? I call her June. She's it's Bubba and June. They're Mississippi. They're very proud of me. They, they're, they're very glad I got on this show. They, they love it. Your, those are your parents' names? Yes, Bubba and June. In real life? Yes. Wow. Oh, Bubba and June Patriot? Yeah, you ever been to Mississippi? You <laughs> 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 love something special. That laugh is something that would make Sandusky cringe, which is nice. <laughs> Well, well, fun, yeah, man. And the Nazi from one of the Indiana Jones movies is up there. That is a bright yellow jacket. Hey, is that true that you met um, Polly in an airport and he said you were a combination of Jack uh, Belushi and Jack Black? He, he did say that to me, but he didn't. it was not at an airport. Why don't you do your research? Uh, well, you can't trust everything on the internet. I'm sorry about that. I don't like to. I like to be accurate. Oh, no, there are inaccurate rumors about you and Polly. There's a lot of stuff swirling around about me on the internet. Don't believe anything you heard on country music television. First of all, <laughs> Rick, when you were having all these stomach problems, I remember that time period yeah. barely. Uh, what was the kind of stomach shit that you were that you were going through? I remember just you like pain. Just yeah. At points. Uh, I mean, there was a lot of vomiting non-stop. Uh, I went into diabetic shock when I was in New York, when I was with Bobby Lee and uh, Freddie Lockhart. But I didn't have insurance, and I'm a fucking man, so I just didn't eat for about six days, so my blood sugar would drop to a decent level. Wow. And uh, pretty much just sick the whole time. Wow. Spent a lot of money going to doctors at first, and that's when I found out doctors don't know shit. So yeah. it was a fun lesson learned. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Because you didn't know that that's what it was. Uh, you were just, you know, you couldn't pinpoint it, so. Yeah, well. What it, did you think it was? Like, what were. I was told that it's um, severe acid reflux and intestinal migraines. And then uh, it was like a, a weird Greek doctor. <laughs> and that's when I learned never trust the Greeks or anything. Not the yogurt, not, nothing. Hey, it's just, it's hey, bath house is pretty much Have you ever had any ailments? Dude, like what about had... so crazy? So true. So true, Wheeze. Dude, you gotta think about stuff. No, I bet, but one thing I do know, I've had stomach problems before, and it's the worst thing you can experience, because that's like the center of your whole... You know, your, your being is just wow. terrible. You're like a fucking doctor. You think it's worse than figure that out? Yeah, it's like worse than cancer? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Short and sweet. Oh, yeah. I didn't hear that. What'd you say? <laughs> anyway. So, uh, well, where did you where did you get this? Uh, I know he showed up after that episode, after that first hey, episode. Hey, I heard you talking on Red Band on the um, Ice House. There was another girl that 
the El Pololo Loco too. Yes. Did she go through the same amount of time? She was very young, so her body was accepted <laughs> it a lot easier. But wow. yeah, she went through uh, the same stuff to a degree. Like hers wasn't uh, as horrible as mine. But for like a couple days or something. Yeah, like three or three days she had it. Well, that's the proof right there. That's the proof of the pudding. Yeah. Oh my God. All right. Well, that's the part of the show where uh, Patriot has a lot of input. Um, yeah. It almost makes you hate America in some ways. That's true. Maybe we could change him to a country we don't like, Patriot. The Canadian Patriot. I'm running for president in 2016. My platform is going to be protect the feet. Dude, it sounds like it's going to be a tough campaign. Yeah. Uh, the reaction you got on the original pitch of it, so. Yeah. Dude, he just got sequestered, right? Uh, Come on, don't sequestered. say that's too many syllables. Dude, it's nice of him to be here during the government shut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, super excited that uh, we have Holly Shore in the house for, uh, you guys know the format of the show, um, so there's a bunch of comedians. Rick, you've done it before. Sandy, you basically know what's going on, right? Awesome. So comedians each do 60 seconds. When they hit 60 seconds, you'll hear the meow of the kitty. And then when it, if they run their time, the angry West Hollywood bear comes out. So don't run over your time limit, or else that bear's gonna come. I heard, I heard the angry West Hollywood bear is a Timberwolves fan. Oh, that's a different, uh, that's a different impression that you just went into there. What was that? Was that one of the sound effects? No. She's getting nervous on the soundboard there. Uh, it's weird seeing Laney without Jerry, by the way. Where is she? Oh, wow, Laney, hello. Oh, there's Jer Bear. He was just oh, probably yeah. spooning a couple of teenagers. Good <laughs> <laughs> dog. The pride of Aspen. It's <laughs> fantastic. Have you guys ever talked to the Iron Patriot before? If you had one question for the Patriot, what would it be between the two of you? Put your heads together. How do you get into that thing? How do you get into that thing? It's like launching the space shuttle. It's a very slow process. I gotta make sure every step is correct because if I screw up, I'll pay for it in pain. What do you look like? I kind of look like Polly Shore because I had this whole story. I came four years ago to talk to Dean. No one said they wanted to hear the story, actually. <laughs> Dude, but one thing in common, I came four years ago, too. Nice, Paul. Oh, you son of a bitch. Right? Oh, he's already on the money. So let's get the show started. Uh, your first comedian tonight. Are you guys ready for this or what, huh? It's crazy. Got so many talented names in there. All right, your first comedian tonight is Scott Kidd. Oh, yeah. Walk so far. <laughs> Is this on? Wait, that's old shtick, right? Yeah. Hello? Is it on? Judge Martin didn't do his job. He's doing Will Tilly. <laughs> oh, okay. Hello? There it is. Can we reset the timer? Thank you. All right, how y'all doing tonight? All right, let's feel some energy in the room. Yeah! Make some noise! Hello! Hi! Wonderful, great. Strong. Anyway, uh, so I work in a casino, and I don't understand compulsive gamblers. I understand them, but I don't understand why they still continue to live. Um, one reason I don't understand them, because when they sit at the table and lose all their money, they go, <laughs> But what they're really thinking is, ah! And they go, just imagine a guy jumping off a building or two trains hitting each other, or I don't know, 9 11. But uh, yeah, it doesn't make any fucking sense. And if uh, Asians are good at math, then why do they spend all their time in casinos? Anybody want to answer that question? No? All right, I'll say something else racist about a different race. Damn it! <laughs> the bear came out quick on that one. Uh, I don't think he has a watch either. No. <laughs> I had no idea what you were talking about. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, he started out strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, cheerleaded, he cheerleaded his way into a good beginning. And then he hit him strong with the segue. Anyway. 
from there, skyrocket to success. Okay. I'm sorry, I just finished saying, I can't wait to not be called up. And then they said my name and I felt like an ass. So I figured I'd make an even bigger ass of myself. I'm gonna stop talking now. That's a good game plan. Yeah, yeah. I think so. <laughs> Who did you make an ass out of? Who did you say that to that you weren't gonna get picked? Uh, I was secretly, tra uh, like, telepathically sending it to you, Tony. But then I guess you read it. And wow. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, that might be the creepiest shit any yeah. guys Bosco. ever write my ass and say. I was trying to telepathically send it to you. <laughs> That's a weird Tony. attempt, man. It's better than Why do you have to say that? I'm just looking right at you, yeah. Tony. <laughs> um, it got weird, and I like he, he was not doing well, and so then he was like, well, now that they don't like me as a person, I should go racist. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. There was, also, there was also one part in the middle of it all in which he had also abandoned their everybody liking him and out of nowhere I don't even think in a proper place just said the words 9-11 yeah. <laughs> well, I'm in this hole now What's the that's a good way out? though because if you just have jokes that don't go well right. you could just abandon them and say 9-11 and just Every if time. you repeat that enough it becomes a good hook right yeah <laughs> push the fear you know, the government just, all, all your jokes should just <laughs> fall off a cliff, and then you mention 9-11 and move on to the next joke, and do that again. And be like, so 9-11, anyway. Yeah, and maybe end every set with a full suicide bombing. <laughs> no, 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 no. No? No. Get at the ice house, taste the room. I think if you're going to talk about a, having a job as niche as uh, a casino worker, you got to try to relate it to jobs that other people have. That's a great point. Like, can you imagine if you worked at Petco and people got addicted to that or something silly like that? I bet they do. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we getting judged? <laughs> I should get judged for saying that. There should be a there should panel, be a panel of, of open of mic <laughs> There should be a panel of, uh, open micers judging the judges. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> also, he, uh, he nailed it with the comic jacket. Oh, I mean, um, yes. I thought that as soon as you got up here. It's uh, cruelty free. We know. As opposed to my jokes. Hot oh. dogs. Singer. Wow. Barely makes sense. <laughs> stretch it, stretch it. What I mean, like, where do you get a jacket like that even from? Like, where do you? Uh, it's like a Macy's thing, I think. No, it yeah. was uh, it was Charlie Murphy's garage sale. Actually. It looks like Pacific Somewhere, if I'm being one hundred percent honest. <laughs> Not OP? Uh, Macy's. It was Macy's? Yeah, it is Macy's. Got that at the DX. I could tell it was a Macy's. Yeah? Yeah. How? Just the, by the look, the smell. Oh. Uh, <laughs> the person inside of it. <laughs> well, there you go. We have a lot of people, so there you go. Scott Kidd, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Got a little something for, uh, he could take that Petco thing, and in case he wants to just continue to fail, he could have the 9-11 hook. So whether he goes good, he's got something, and if he wants to not do good, he could just be that 9-11 comedian. I, I've heard a lot of people say, I like a lot of comedians, but I, I wish there was a 9-11 comedian that just repeated it. The problem is going to be there's going to be conspiracy theorists that say he bombs like that on purpose. Yeah. 9-11 stuff. Could be. It's fake like Tower 7. <laughs> Patriot, what do you think of Scott Kidd? Um, I was thinking about his performance at the podcast festival and how much he changed. Because remember, he's doing that real country guy, and then he changed. He's kind of more normal this time. Okay. Um, and then I saw there was another Kill Tony who was normal before that. So what do you think about all these changes? What do you think he should do? Do you think he should do that character? He's, he's trying to find his voice. He definitely. Yeah. You can tell he's searching for it. Yeah, he's, he's goofing around. He's at Devo Kid on Twitter, by the way. D-E-V-O-K-I-D-D. -D. Anyway, your next comedian <laughs> goes by the name of J-Mac, everybody. Oh, wow. <laughs> So I'm tired of being reverse stereotypified in this town, in Hollywood especially. I get stereotyped as a stereotyper. And I get it. I know how I look, how I sound, but I'm not a rapper. 
<laughs> but if I was, my rapper name, Iron Patriot, would be Cheetos and Chicken Spread. Woo! Because that's what I'm all about. You gotta keep it real if you're gonna be a rapper. I can never be like a hardcore gangster rapper. Because they like for their women to be a queen in the streets and a freak between the sheets. But I ain't got it like that. I need somebody between the sheets that's very understanding. <laughs> she could be a freak in the streets, you know. Blow my buddies while I'm watching the game. <laughs> as long as I'm getting mines. <laughs> See, I ain't had enough sex to be freaky. That's the thing, you know, the more sex you have, the freaky you get. My biggest my fetish is when I get a girl to be there. Whoa, 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 you don't fight the bear. Don't fight the bear. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. It sounds angry. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there was like, the bear lit off an old firework there at the end. <laughs> it really messed <laughs> up. <laughs> Fuck yeah, J Mac. Yeah. Ran the light. At least I was running. There you go. Right. Yeah. You looked up at the balcony for a last of that one. By the way, who did that snort during that? Was that yeah, that was a beautiful snort. Uh, lady. Yeah, it, it was not only a nice snort, but the Asian girl still covered her mouth traditionally. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that really did happen. I totally thought it was you because so you did that's what I thought. Her. It was really you? I embarrassed her. That's amazing. That's nice. Man, that's like ventriloquism. Yeah. You get to know your snorts. Heck yeah. J Mac, do you often get a uh, do you often draw a lot of snorts from the audience when uh, you're doing comedy? When I'm back home, but it's not laughter, it's just. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, that's a lot of it's interesting. It's not just people yeah. sniffing crystal meth. Polly, uh, what do you think of uh, what do you think of J Mac? Dude, we like him, right? Dude, look at him. <laughs> You're a big hit in Oklahoma. Dude, dude, I know. You're telling me. Son in law, right? Dude, son in law's the Still reason why Oklahoma fell in love with me. Yeah, bro. I want to squeeze you. <laughs> that is what Polly's actually like, by the way. Like, yeah, like they don't know. But uh, way nicer. Yeah, like, I wish we could replace Polly with just Sandy as Polly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If we talked to Mitchie, she'd be like, he's better, I like him. <laughs> <laughs> it's better now. Oh, it's great. Fuck yeah. J Mac, where do you keep your uh, bandana thing that when you're like asleep? Or, uh, I, picture you, I picture you as the kind of guy for some reason that might go to bed with like one of those sleeping hats on with that has like the quality and it's extended. It's called a sleep apnea machine. That's my. That's his Do you really have one? Do you wear yeah. You really do. Yeah. How do you have diabetes and I don't? Well, I, it, it's a different, it's an interesting question. Yeah. Uh, I I have the kind that God gave, and you're going for the kind that you caused. <laughs> uh, you have the American kind. So yours is the pure American hope, anyway. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't, that's the only thing I can think of. That's why I think I didn't know for so long, because I'm not overweight. I have juvenile diabetes. I just didn't get it until I was 30. So. J-Mac, you were in uh, the comedy boxing matches a few weeks ago. Uh, and let me just say, the best part about that match was that you chose to wear your shirt. <laughs> that other guy, right. I mean, that was frightening. Oh, oh yeah, was the game. belly button was. It was like the crater killed the dinosaurs. Yeah. Or something. I thought that was his dick. I didn't know that was his belly button. Who knows? Wait, wait, wait. did he have an Audi? No, no, it just was. Do people still have Audis? No, that's so they're not doing Audis anymore. <laughs> yeah, I sent a picture to a buddy back home. He's, he's texted back and said, uh, "Is that a tumor? Is his dick?" Damn. Wow. There should be a certain weight uh, by law that if you hit it, like you can't not wear a shirt in public. Yeah. <laughs> like, like it's swimming. I mean, a lot of do you, do you wear your shirt while you're swimming? 
actually not so much always did. Do you float or sink when you're in a swimming pool? Really? really? I can walk on water and sink water. I That's amazing. I can float in fresh water. I can have a beer and a cigarette and just lay out. I can wow. see That's him. actually what Jesus looked like. They just cleaned his image up for Hollywood. Yeah, absolutely. I can see him swimming with the shirt off just because he doesn't want to be like Mexicans. Yeah. I mean, he does have an American flag wrapped around his yeah. head tight right now. Yeah, all this looks way better underwater. <laughs> Some, he's got a great underwater uh, you should see him body. Underwater. He looks fat, but you should see him underwater. I'm an underwater <laughs> model. Like, it's like funhouse mirrors. It just works for him. Mm -hmm. That's great. Fuck yeah. Well, there he goes. J-Mac, everybody. J-Mac. Uh -huh. That's J-Mac. The name of that joke, by the way, there's also a, a one area on these sign-up sheets where sometimes people write down their topic. It leaves a space for it. And the name of that, uh, what he just talked about up here, is what he calls reverse stereotypification. That's the name of that. Reverse stereotypification. And Scott Kidd talked about smoking. That's not what he talked about he at all. He didn't mention that whatsoever. But Scott is a fucking liar. <laughs> Improvise some different stuff. Should have tried. Should have stuck with the smoke. Yeah, I'm kidding. <laughs> All right, Polly, you having fun? Dude, what stereotypification? <laughs> Ooh, this is, looks like a new name. Put your hands together for Joe Baron. Hello, folks. And here we go. So I was living in Hawaii. <laughs> And I finally found out that this girl I really liked dumped a boyfriend. So I figured this is a good time to call her up. I called her up, she was drunk, and she told me, I asked her out, she goes, Joe, I just hope I have visions fucking you. So I told her, well, I have visions fucking you, isn't that halfway there? Okay, that didn't work. So I figured, I also have something 50% off if you go shopping. She hung up, got mad, hung up the phone, that was it. Didn't say anything about her sisters or nothing like that, so. Okay, we go to the next one. Okay, at single <laughs> I'm staying here, I don't care. Okay, I went to single to my own, went to a concert, this blonde girl, she was very drunk, falling on everybody. And somebody comes up to me and goes, what's her name anyway? I don't know, but if I bring her home in about two hours, her name will get out. Smitter, <laughs> smitter. He nailed the wave as the cat's on the way. There's one thing you got, it's timing. <laughs> timing. <laughs> the bad part about it, it actually went better than the first time. Dude, Jay London cleaved himself up, right? <laughs> Tough Jay London have PJ, I think. Oh, yeah. I burned a giant hat. You have to talk to the microphone. I, I burned a giant hat. That's what I'm hearing this one. Well, you didn't have to repeat that one. Yeah. But. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work before either. Joe, you know what I liked about uh, your material is that uh, I couldn't tell when jokes started and ended. Yeah. <laughs> and I went into you until you said next one. All right, so that didn't work. Like it just, I didn't even know. It was, was that just me? I mean, this, you guys were completely silent. Well, I thought it was going to be funny, though, when I said, well, I have fish, fucking you. So, but what was she saying? I don't have fish, fucking you. I thought you said that she said the same thing as you. I yeah. Was no, what I said is, uh, she said, Joe, I don't have visions fucking you. So I told her, well, look, I have visions fucking you. Isn't that me and we're halfway there? That's what I said. But why would she tell you that she doesn't have visions of fucking you? Because I asked her out, and that's what she said. You asked her out on a date. Yeah. Well, how did you say that? Like, how did that go? Let's go out. I like this. You just walked right up to her and said that out no, of nowhere. I said on the phone. You called her. I called her. How'd you get her number? She gave it to me. When? Uh, I don't know. I was, uh, she worked at the hotel in the uh, like the So you're in Hawaii. Yeah, I lived there about 18 years. <laughs> But hey, he also said she broke up with her boyfriend. So when did that happen? Um, about two days before I wrote her. How did you find out that she had broken up with her boyfriend? She told me. 
How did she tell you? Ooh. She, uh, I broke up with him because I got fed up with him working part time for ten years. You what? He got fed up with her working part time for ten years. But where were you when she told you this information? Uh, where she worked at. Were you staying at that hotel? No, no, I used to go visit all of them. You used to just show up at the hotel. <laughs> See, now I think we're getting somewhere. Here we go. Um, so you used to show up at the hotel that she worked at, but you weren't you weren't staying there doing anything. You were just there. To... No, I was just visiting her once in a while, hoping. Uh, Even though she had a boyfriend. Yeah, well, there's OPP. I don't know what's crazy. <laughs> I don't know what's crazy, the fact that you would show up at that hotel regularly, or the fact that she would update you on her boyfriend Loser. breaking up with her. Uh, <laughs> no, I just like visiting her, that's all. And I used to visit her, and there's another girl, Sandy, and then I find it. Where did oh. Sandy work? Uh, I forgot. Oh, she used to be no, in a coffee shop. <laughs> did no. she have a boyfriend, too? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, do you, think that, a do you think there's a chance that maybe they're just telling them they have boyfriends? There might be a chance. But I'm amazed that she would tell you that she didn't. She'd like to tell me about her business. So, so when do. you said... <laughs> how did you, wow, she gave you her number, too. That's interesting. She's like one of those girls that likes hanging out with other guys and not girls. Um, she has a lot of guy friends. Um, boyfriend didn't get did you ever hang out with her outside of the hotel where she was working? Yeah, I used to go to lunch with her and stuff like that. Nice. I used to go to lunch with her, I used to go to the beach with her. His boyfriend didn't like doing anything. Wow. She was a nice, cute little Chinese girl. Oh, oh. why'd you go to this? <laughs> uh, because she's a Chinese girl. Uh, <laughs> good point. Fuck yeah. Um, how many chicks have you, uh, have you killed before? How many girls? Yeah. Uh, should I include prostitutes and strippers? No, 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 no. <laughs> Just uh, 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 in innocent victims. <laughs> uh, let's the see, when I, was, when I had hair, about uh, eight, then... All right. So I go, it's about three chicks. <laughs> no. no okay. Well, in school, it was pretty, it was pretty good. It was at nine in school. <laughs> Wait, you just went from eight Mars to nine. five. Uh, Joe, I'm pretty sure we're all going to have to testify in court after you. <laughs> so, uh, thank you. Uh, hey, you guys have anything you want to, any questions or anything for Joe, guys? Dude, yeah. I killed Stephen Baldwin's career. <laughs> you was awesome. I know, babe. <laughs> bio don't do, bio don't do. <laughs> you really want that sequel, don't you? Yeah, I do. You think the Baldwin would ever do it? Dude, he's been calling me up to do it. But it's like, he wants to do it with no cursing and no drug references. You're out on that shit, right? Yeah, dude, you gotta have that stuff. Purple sticky punch, purple sticky... Uh, uh, uh. Uh. Fuck yeah. Okay, can I go now? Sure. Yeah. 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 I like how he, I like how he wears funny. a Hawaii shirt to do Hawaii materials. Right. And shorts. It really, it really <laughs> nails it. it. Really hammers it home. You know what? Maybe that first guy should have worn his casino uniform. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. The little green visor might have really taken it up. Cash register. <laughs> oh, it would have been great. Fuck yeah. Joe, you're not on Twitter, huh? No. <laughs> not until I'm ready. No. You know, I would he's ready to date, to but he's not ready to tweet. Yeah. <laughs> he's not ready. At least he knows where he stands. It should almost be like a driver's license. Like you should have to be able to show you can tweet yeah. before they give you that privilege. So. Yeah. Dude, what do you mean? Have you seen my Twitter? No, no. Actually, you're one of the only people yeah. I ever had to follow and immediately unfollow. <laughs> what, do you, no, what do you mean, dude? It, it, Polly, if you think if I were to ask Sandy uh, what uh, some of his uh, favorite Polly tweets that he's seen, what would they be? <laughs> About to go on stage with Sambi, as stars in Babji. <laughs> wow, funny you, shit. <laughs> Uh, hi, babes. About to go to the mansion. <laughs> uh, it's, you know, hey, Cincinnati, I'm about to be there. 
Probably has a business side too, and if you watch the movie Polly Shore's Dead, came out in 2000. If you go to the special features and you listen, he, he's a smart guy and he has a lot to say about the entertainment business because he's been in here since a small boy in this club. You know? Yeah, that's not true at all. I think you just said. <laughs> no, you got to check it out. Go to the special features. There you go. Our next comedian, everybody, goes by the name of Jonathan Tomlin. <laughs> What's up, y'all? Um, when I moved to LA, I learned quick that you gotta be uh, color appropriate. But I didn't know it applied to Hollywood. I was walking down the street on Hollywood Boulevard, and I was approached by this gang of Negroes. They came up behind me, and they were like, what up, cuz? What you do with all that blue on, cuz? And I was stuck, because I'm not a bitch, but I was scared, you know what I mean? <laughs> and it wasn't gonna go over well if I got jumped by a bunch of skinny jean wearing dudes and shit. So, uh, you know, I did the only thing I knew to do when I'm in trouble, I went back to my roots, and I was like, uh, excuse me, my brother. I don't know anything about the he said that you're talking about. I'm just trying to get to the club over here. And they let me go, man. They were like, you wanted them real niggas, huh? That's it. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah. I mean, you, you killed it more than the other people. I have that same punchline to a lot of my jokes. <laughs> but, dude, that's one of my jokes word for word. <laughs> <laughs> I stole it from Bobby. Dude, always... sometimes people just, you know, have the same thoughts. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. I've I think always like, been I think like that... a brother. Oh, you're going racist, man. <laughs> What do you mean? <laughs> Dude, I was in the wash. I was shut the fuck up. What was in the wash? I don't even know about that. Dude, Snoop yeah. Dogg and Dre. The remake of the car wash. Dude, yeah, the oh, George Carl. That's what they call it. I've always found it a little crazy that gangs do uh, use color differential. It's crazy as hell, but I mean, the government does the same thing. The government? Yeah. The Democrats and Republicans? The Democrats. And the Democrats and the Republicans, or whatever you call it. I don't know what I call it. I don't call it any of that. <laughs> it's it's just funny. It's a different world I live in. You know what I mean? Everything's a game to me. So which one? Which side are you on? <laughs> I'm like a superhero. <laughs> <laughs> Sex is like that game. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Not for me. Or guess who? In some people's cases. <laughs> Operation because she's only four. I think I did good. Y'all did not talk to me. <laughs> Just don't hit the sun. <laughs> don't scrape the DNA off into the girl. Does anybody hey, ever... snorty? <laughs> Has anybody ever tried to get you in a in a gang before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was younger, uh, I went to my stepdad and I was like, "Yeah, I'm thinking I'm gonna join a gang." And he's like, "Son, if you're gonna join a gang, like you gotta whoop my ass because I'm not gonna let, let that happen." And you know, like, I just didn't do it. Wow. I have a joke about it, though, where I did beat his ass and join a gang. <laughs> but you didn't. <laughs> does, it, does it work anything like the NBA draft? Like, do you have to declare? <laughs> it kind of does. Like, they, they like look I'm at, looking to thug. They look at your, like, physical, your physical specs. <laughs> Come to the combine. <laughs> let us see how you... you Shoot know, a few niggas or two. Yeah. They're, like, watching you at the arcade, the shooting game. <laughs> yeah, they watch you, like... Yeah. You know, I have a really good workout for the Latin Kings. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Holly is on fire tonight. <laughs> this is the sharpest he's ever been. It's unbelievable. Polly's killing. Um, uh, fuck yeah. That was really, really good. Guys. So there's not yeah. really any tips because it's already pretty, pretty good. So. Held. I like you held the hat. You took it off. Oh, yeah, like you respectful. Yeah. Like the dinner table. Yeah. 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 Fuck yeah, Jonathan Tumblr. He's J Sherlock T on Twitter at J Sherlock T. No clue is the name of that uh, was the name of the the topic. They should always bring black people up to Van Halen. Yeah, that's funny. 
Uh, Patriot's known for his accidental racism. He's originally from Texas. Uh, he uh, sometimes just doesn't know any better of exactly what he's saying, and you'll notice it pops up sometimes. Like yeah. uh, Patriot, what'd you think of Jonathan Tumble? Yeah, I, I think you, you guys summed it up pretty good. I, I, I like the female brothers. We, we went over that. I like the female hombres. Eva Longoria. Oh, you. I like her feet. I like her nose. I, I like all Did that. Did you talk about Eva Longoria? No, not at all. You went off on a real... Uh... Attention. Attention. <laughs> what did he say? I'm like Ross Perot. I'll just I'll say what I want. Wow. Have you ever met a girl that has a little hair on her toe? Uh, no, I gotta be shaved. I like her legs and everything clean. No hair. You, you can have some hair on the pouch, that's okay. <laughs> have you ever been with a chick that had hairy legs? Uh, maybe a little bit, but never out of control or anything. Have you ever been with a chick? Yes, yes. Hell yeah. But it has been a while. When are the, yes. the last two times you hooked up yeah, with girls again? I told you the last time I had sex was uh, May of 2004, the, the last episode of Friends. <laughs> <laughs> that's what remember, I remember that song? No one told you life was gonna be that way. Time's a joke you broke. You love life went astray. Seems like you're always stuck in second gear. It hasn't been your day, week, or month, or even your year. I'll be there for you. The Rembrandt. You remember that song? Right. Yeah. That was a catchy ass song, man. The well, last time you got laid, did you own that costume? Oh no! I just got this back in uh, in May when Iron Man three came out. It took me a year and a half, Sandy, to get this costume. I ordered it from Norway, and I waited a long time. I didn't think I was going to get it. There was a lot of legal problems, health issues with the sculptor. Didn't think I was going to get it, but I got it. It changed my life because I, I I came to the comedy store and Tony put me on this show, and and it's really cool. I got all these fans on Twitter, and they love me. Who, who did you have sex with the uh, night Friends ended? What? I said, who did you have sex with? Ah, that was a bartender girl at the Sugar Shack. I was a DJ there in Dallas. The Sugar Shack? Yeah. Did you ever fuck during Mad About You? Ah, uh, no. <laughs> Strange. What about Caroline in the City? Ah, uh, no, 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 no. Have you ever tried to fuck any of your Twitter followers? Ah, um, well, I'm, I'm hoping things are going to change for me. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to meet women, and um, it's just a matter of time before I get lucky again. Can I ask you something? If you met a girl that adored you because of your persona with the with the costume on, yeah. would you fuck her with the costume on? Yeah. Or... <laughs> no hesitation. No hesitation. I don't think you got the final word out on that. Anybody in the adult film business wants to get with me, I'm ready to be signed up. Put me on contract. Wow. Yeah. What would your porn name be? Ah. What would be the Iron Patriots porn motto or porn oh, share your banana with the Iron Patriot. <laughs> oh, Wait, share your banana? Are you a game porn? Hold on, are you just Share your banana. Hey, uh, Iron Patriot, we actually have a lady in the audience. It's in the adult industry. Oh, really? Mia uh, Lee, how are you doing today? I'm good. Oh, you're very beautiful. I came out to do it like this, and you guys like it. Um, Would you ever work with the Iron Patriot? I just did a shoot for fucking machine, so if you are available to oh. Marvel gives a release, I guess. Oh. Well, so. You can wear it well, here. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're already uh, questioning whether or not, because Marvel in some forms, you know, it's in, we put yeah. us in quite the conundrum because they own the Iron Patriot. Yeah. Well, this, However, is, this is kind of a custom model, so I might not have as much trouble. Well, we already moving. found a solution, actually, because we want to avoid, you know, there's been rumors of a lawsuit, a pending lawsuit, uh, Death Squad versus Marvel. And we wouldn't want any, <laughs> we wouldn't want anything of the such. So I think we're going to uh, bring a... Yeah, we're going to start bringing beards. Yeah, uh, we're going to try some different looks for you. Like a curly sure. hipster mustache. Yeah. yeah. Do you think I should just call myself the Comic Patriot instead of trying to do Iron Patriot anymore? I think you could call yourself the Rocketeer because I think the path that counts. Because oh. your career's about put to a take fin off. On the head. Yeah. <laughs> you just put a fin on the head and call yourself the Rocketeer. Oh yeah. They'll probably appreciate it. Good idea, Sam. Yeah. Go sell some VHS. Right. Yeah. 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 Laser disc. Yeah. Wow. I see, I see good things yeah, laser, laser disc is the best way to watch my movies. <laughs> so true. The Munchies and the Weasel. 
Right. Back to the bucket we go on that note. Um, your next comedian is Leah Nauer. I was a virgin until I was 20. Um, I was living in a club called Abstinence is Cool. But I was, I was waiting to fall in love. And um, I found it. I fell in love with sex. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, we're going on a year and a half, and we're thinking of taking our relationship to the next level. Anal. <laughs> I'm really excited. Um, but that being said, I've only had sex with one guy, and it totally works in my favor, because now, like, whenever we're in a fight and I'm mad at him, I'll just be like, Yeah, well, you're the worst fuck I've ever had! And then when we're happy, he's still the worst fuck I've ever had. <laughs> He's seven years older than me, and I love older guys, but there's one thing that they do that I cannot stand. I'll be talking to a guy, he'll find out that I'm 21, and then they'll be like, oh, whoa, am I going to get arrested for talking to you? Uh, are you going to rape me while you're talking to me? Yeah. Probably. Thanks, I'm way too hour. Yeah. Uh -huh. How old are you? I'm 21. And you, uh, you, you've only really slept with one person before? Yep. Um, can, you Dude. <laughs> can I make a suggestion from your material? Please. You should have sex with another guy, Sam Movie Star. <laughs> and then you'll have a lot more material because you can talk about that, babe. Okay, thanks, Polly. <laughs> Here, put your number on my phone. I'm about to come. You wait, but you're not a movie star. <laughs> what? Wait, wait, what did, what did she just said? Polish not a movie star. Oh my goodness. He was on a made for TV movie on country music sorry. television two years ago. It was called Whiskey Business. That yeah, was. Well, that did come out. He played a. Uh, That's another thing, much like The Rocketeer, something I haven't thought of in quite a while. <laughs> Um, whiskey business. Yeah, he, I think he played this situation. Essentially. Dude, I, it, was, it was Polly Shrug goes Jersey show. Nailed it. Um, fuck yeah, well what an interesting perspective you must have as a 21 year old. How long have you lived in LA? Two years. How long have you been 21? Um, Great question. <laughs> At least two years. <laughs> When did you first have sex? How long ago was this? Um, it was on my, well, I was technically 19, but also 20. It was like on my 20th birthday, the eve of. Wow. So, yeah. Jesus, girls are so fucked up like that. Yeah. I'm saving it for the eve of my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Fuck yeah. Yeah, I think just, you know, more fucking. <laughs> are, are you really going to do an anal? Are you going to, are you going to, are you done the anal? Tried, didn't, didn't work out. Did it hurt too much? Or just not no, it just like, didn't work. Oh, because wow. he was gay or something? No, I want to try again, but. <laughs> He's so smiley. You gotta have a bottle of whiskey for the anal. You gotta have a glass of red wine and a Valium. I'm pretty sure I just. Oh, no. Pretty sure I just said that. Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I just heard Red Band come in his pants. Yeah. I heard this weird liquid release and a little splash. I actually heard him come in my pants. <laughs> It's heated because it's salmonella. It's a little hot. Um, fuck yeah. How long have you been doing stand-up? Um, almost a year and a half. Wow. So you had six months of pre-fucking comedy. No, I was a virgin when I started comedy. So I had a lot of material about being a virgin, and then I had to scrap all of that when I finally had sex. <laughs> Jeez. For the best, I guess. Did you find uh, anyone... At a comedy show ever related to your virgin material? Um, <laughs> Most mean, of the guys. Some, no. Yeah, no. Some girls, like, out of pity would woo. Like, they're proud of me. Why did you choose to remain a virgin for so painfully long? I was waiting for love. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm a hopeless romantic. Aww. Yeah, you're 21. <laughs> that'll, that'll, uh, I can't wait start. until she's 25 to see the fucking material. <laughs> So, I do a lot of anal, and... I don't know if you guys know what blown out means. Uh, <laughs> that's going to be a beautiful set, though. 
I got the cutest pink sock. Did I announce that last name right? Kanauer with it's, a K? It's Kanauer. Kanauer. Yeah. Kanauer. Wow. It's a, a weird subject matter to talk about how you just had sex and you've only had sex with one person because it automatically makes us all think like, fuck. You know, and now we're all thinking about sex while looking at you. Sure. And so yeah. it, it's very a weird... Lady, is that what but you're thinking? But at least thinking? it's not like a dirty ah. way. No, no, it's in a really very dirty way. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about fucking fucking you on the ass while fucking a dildo at the same time and shitting on you. Sure. Like no. that. <laughs> Amazing. It's amazing everywhere. that you have that stuff like that in the back of your oh, brain to you <laughs> use when the time still isn't right. But, but, but when, I, I, and honestly, but when you when you talk about it, you're so beautiful when you talk about such a, a, a thing like this, you automatically kind of like, you, I got brainwashed and I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, cool. Yeah, I don't know. A bucket of ice or something? <laughs> Jesus. It's weird sitting next to dudes with boners on a stage. <laughs> It's not weird, but it's... It's different. only weird because it's out of his pants right now. <laughs> <laughs> Would you fuck her I boyfriend to, try it to get on. to her? What? Would you fuck her boyfriend to get to her? Uh, Hand shot? Is that her boyfriend, the guy right He'll up there? He'll take the her from behind. That's you him. take her from behind <laughs> him. <laughs> Got a yellow jacket. Right? Um, but anyway, what I was saying is that it's very... It's, it is distracting when you, when you bring up sex and you're so innocent and beautiful looking. So like, be prepared that a lot of your material is probably going to be a lot of guys going, uh, instead of like, right. I don't know. Another option, another option is to keep the material and get fat and gross. Yeah. 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 Always a yeah. equal plan. No? No. Patriot, what did you think yeah, of Leah? You know, you know, I've heard Dr. Drew say that that constant anal sex can be dangerous. Because when you get older, you might have to wear diapers. And it just fall out. Okay. Yeah, be yeah. careful. Be careful with that. Think about your That's pretty, basically that's pretty much as good as I think Dr. Drew would say it if he was here. So uh, yeah. Yeah. will you yeah. show Iron Patriot your feet? No, no, no. I was like so afraid that he was gonna look at them actually. Uh, <laughs> don't worry, come at these. I won't okay. bother you. Okay. Cool. Thank you. What's wrong with your feet? No, that. it's just that they're. You got one of those retarded little toes. I don't know. It just like freaks me out knowing that people get turned on my feet and then I'm wearing glasses. Those are like naked shoes you're wearing. Naked, it looks like you're not sure. wearing shoes oh. at all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's why he said he wasn't going to look. He well, already she, looked. She's not wearing open toed sandals, I can already tell. <laughs> By what, the smell? <laughs> no, I just looked, I glanced down, there. you can't see nothing. How long How long do you think she was on the stage until you had to look at her feet? Uh, I just tell the truth. And you, know, you know, I'm always looking at everything in this club to make sure it's just yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, you're not. We can see where you're looking, yeah. and it's only within like a 30 degree radius. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, seriously, Patriot, what what part of her being up here did you look at her feet? Uh, I glanced as she as she got on stage. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Patriot. When you have a foot fetish, you own that shit. I, mean, I don't know. You're the only pal that I know that has yeah. a foot fetish. Patriot, would you consider going to podiatry school? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you, do you get a pedicure every once in a while? Do you... I don't want to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> What'd she say? She said she didn't want to tell him. That's answer. a perfect answer. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I would say, too. Leah, Na Leah Knauer, yeah, everybody. Thank you. Knauer. Yeah. She's got an O-ring that doesn't even let dicks in at this point. <laughs> very, very tight. Most chicks at 21 are just, you know, I mean, they're on the Sibian already nowadays, you know. Is this guy already following her on Twitter? Yeah, over here? What's, going what's on? happening right Follow! Now? Wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So if you follow him back, you're surely going to get a DM in about 13 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> you like pod when a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to show business, kid. Do you like Olive Garden? Yeah. <laughs> Bruce Boyman? <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey everybody, nice to see you. Um, you know, Jewish people have been attracted to comedy, you know, through history. So for the next minute, I'm going to be your village idiot. Yes. You know, I love re interacting with younger people. You know, it's always interesting. Um, 
you know, uh, young people check out older, young guys check out older women, you know, sexy ones, and they call them MILF. And I'm hoping some nice lady, young ladies checking me out thinking, hey, he's a father I'd like to hump, which would make me filth. <laughs> Worked out? Yeah. <laughs> I'm in fact, my last girlfriend said I was just like the dog, you know, and she's right. My dog jewels, because at Sam's Club they have kibbles and bits. I jewel at the strip club, because they have nipples and clicks. <laughs> you know, we're all here trying to, you know, build a comedy career. And it's dangerous. In the very last episode of The Three Stooges, Curly injured his groin. He became a eunuch. Yuck, yuck, yuck. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a minute. I am an instant fucking fan. Yeah, yeah. me too. Yeah. It's, it's cool, because he reminds me, like, from the waist up, he's like a dad. But then from the waist to the knees, he's like stone cold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You are well ventilated. Yeah, well, and I'm sure it won't be long until he has the two black knee braces. So, uh, yeah. and actually, he's just going to grow more and more into Stone Cold from the waist. But, it, but instead of beers, he'd be crushing Manischewitz. Bruce, Absolutely. I love your fucking style, man. Like you'll do a joke and then it goes right into something like some kind of interesting. I love the bark at the kibbles and uh, I mean, I didn't like kept, uh, nipples and clits that much, but when that bark came out, I was, my tune changed immediately. It's better to bark into the microphone than drool into the microphone like the dog, so. Right, good this point, too. Mic with no cord. Yeah, it's like fucking crazy-ass technology, the cordless mic. Um, we got it special. Um, I think even, even the, the short sleeve business shirt, that might be what Stone Cold works. <laughs> like he, he's got a cubicle job now. That was from years of being a chiropractor. You were a chiropractor? I'm retired. And I'll tell you something. I thinking you thinking you'd go in a career change and start cracking people up, huh? My <laughs> <laughs> chiropractor jokes, people. I've been waiting to do that for nine years. Well, you know, a chiropractor's work is up to his hands. But when Obamacare pays for fisting, we'll be in our work up to our elbows. Fucking Obama. Oh, shit. <laughs> Fucking Obama. The bear is angry that you tried that joke out. I think I think that joke would have worked if he had a barking or Curly's laugh type sound effect. True. Yeah. Can you do the eunuch? Just that one part again. The end of that. Just, 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 just say the word eunuch. Nick, Nick. Eunuch. Nick, Nick, Nick. Is that what you do? It's so funny. <laughs> Did it differently that time. But I'm, still, I'm in love with you. Um, what do you, so what do you do now? How long, you, how long are you in LA? You live here? Been in LA for a year, doing this for six months. After uh, years in Portland, Oregon, a great town, good comedy scene, and it was going so well. When life fell apart, you know, family courts and things like that. Oh, that I that you into this world fast. Right. This is going boring. Yeah. yeah. Ah. Days, so. yeah. Family courts are terrible. Got to get that on the record. Right. My ex-wife used to, used to terrorize me with the family court. So I turned her into Homeland Security as the Unimom. Oh, you better look at it. Dennis Frazier. It was also nice oh, that the bear is launching fireworks. Yeah. He creepily rubbed his belly when he told that joke. Yeah. It was like, like, a nice, just, like that's ooh. where his wife is now, like he ate her. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we've, all, we've all heard that acronym MILF, but I've never heard of the filth. Father, I'd like to fuck. And I'm sure, Patriot, you must be a really big fan of Bruce, because I'm pretty sure that underneath the suit, you guys are about the same age, right? No, I'm, I'm 46. <laughs> and oh. Let me tell you something, Tony. You might not make it to 46 with all your smoking. Oh, they, Jesus. Well, take it easy on me. Or that lip. I think, yeah, I think. they put the Surgeon General warning on cigarettes for a reason, Tony. Good valid point. Thank you. Thank you, Patriot. Meanwhile, the guy that was making your suit had health issues with whatever paint and whatever the fuck's on that. And you trap your body in it for God only knows how long. No, because his body was hurting because he wears an Iron Man too. He had a lot of pain in his back and hands. And Wait, the guy that wa wears an Iron Man suit is the same guy that sculpted your uniform? Yeah, he was one of the first ones to make a walking Iron Man suit back in 2007. He was already working on this thing, even before Iron Man came out in 2008. He was working on it. This guy is one of the best sculptors in the world. Yeah! 
Yeah, there you go. I'm glad Bruce is up here for this part. Yeah, Bruce, thank you so much. Uh, please come back. Sign up again soon. Very funny. He's yeah. just holding the microphone like a priest. Oh, he's got business, business cards. But, uh, yeah. Oh, thank shit. You. He threw... Sh he insulted us and called us he, homeless. He just, yeah, he just he said, said he gets... He said, I, I get these to all the homeless people, people we meet. <laughs> He doesn't have a Twitter handle, but you can call him at, uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he does have an AOL, however. Oh, yeah. AOL. Version yeah. 3.5, it says on here. Wow. That was a good year. AOL.com. 10,000 free hours. If, if, I, if, I, if I had no idea who this was and I saw the card, I would know exactly what he looks like. It's got an AOL email, his phone number, and a brick wall with tomatoes smashed up against it. Yeah. <laughs> See, I thought it was blood stains. So, one's a blood stain, one's a tomato. Family courts to the belly room. That guy's making it right now. Yeah. Hey, Bruce Boy. I don't know where your ex-wife is, but uh, I think she can see who's winning now. Hell you know yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> All right. She might have gotten the money, but. <laughs> yeah. Did it not go well, the verdict? Well, feel free to come back here. Use this place as an outlet. One more time for Bruce Boyd. Yeah. Finding his dreams. Out here. Great sense of humor. Keep rocking, Bruce. Here he got for your next comedian, Jeff McKinnon, everybody. Yeah. 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 Uh, you already met uh, my girlfriend, Leah Knauer. Uh, <laughs> her time up there was a thrill for me. <laughs> Stole this whole room, I'm the worst fuck she's ever had. And at 21, I don't think she realized, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I just don't. Uh, and interesting enough, I, I know that uh, you posed that Brian might have to fuck me to get to her. Uh, and I'm not putting anything on the table, but uh, truth be told, I am bisexual. Uh, which is a label I don't... It's not a label I like. I prefer sexual double threat. <laughs> because that, when people hear bisexual, they're like, what, so that just means you'll just fuck anybody? It's like, no. There are still ugly people. <laughs> like, I like very specific types of people. I like short, beautiful women and guys who look kind of like me. <laughs> I've been like the last 25 years trying to figure out if I'm bisexual or just the most extreme narcissist. Narcissist! Narcissist, thank you. That's it, everybody, thanks. There you go. Interesting. So you're the one that took uh, Leah's virginity, huh? Yeah. Fucking A. So do I just, can I just put it like on your cheek or something like that? <laughs> I just drag it on your chin? Red Band, just retweet me once and uh, you get a blowjob. Okay. Uh, retweeted. Uh, yeah. I, think it, I think it's I, from him. They do kind of look alike, a little bit. I do oh. have a question. Yeah. If he's bisexual, how did the ass sex not work out? <laughs> I know that was going to be posed. You know, I, in general... <laughs> I mean, I'm not a fan of uh, oh, anal sex, butthole? period. Oh, okay. Across the board, I find the butthole to be uh, disgusting. In so a when you're with another dude, you guys are just like blowing each other? Just ramming dicks. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like a mountain goat. Yeah. <laughs> we, we have so so much Kathy Griffin. I don't know. That's, uh, that's all there is. All right, so you, you read today, Joe the Plumber said, wanting a white president doesn't make you racist, it actually makes you American. Actually, it makes you a racist American. And I just retweeted that. Thank you, Brian. Yeah. yeah. All right, Leah, uh, can we get you up here? Patriot, secure the back. We've got this, it's a deal. Yeah. And he wants a podcast, too, so this is going to work out. Uh, it's like a double retweet. Nice. All down. Um, I, my only advice would be um, you should definitely break up with that girl. And, uh, <laughs> look, I'm trying to help Red Band here as much as I possibly can. Um, no, it's weird. Uh, two uh, comedy couples, it's strange. I think in general. I have someone to hang out with while I watch this show. Look, it's either going to not work out for you guys as a couple or 
as comedians. Yeah, to be honest, if she had done much better than me, I probably would have broke up with her tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, that's funny you say that, because yeah. I was going to well, say she actually did other. better than you tonight. <laughs> so. Thank you, Tony. Brian, you're in business. What's that? Well, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus. Thank you. Wild I have a mirror. There's the snorter, too. Oh, yeah. Can't win them all. She'll oh. let you fuck those... On gaping nostrils. <laughs> um, because she's a snorter. She was the snorter dude. She doesn't have a weird nose or anything. I just have allergies. Okay, Jesus. Oh, yeah. She's got <laughs> gaping attitude. Come on, you're killing the mood. What is that? What is that? So that sucks that's, yeah. how you guys broke up. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, awesome. Fuck yeah. So what are you going to do now that you're single? Uh, Dudes. Story goes to <laughs> Keep.com, apparently. I never knew that that opportunity existed here. So oh, yeah. I know a pretty desperate man by the name of uh, Bruce. Bruce Boyman. <laughs> and I think probably the best way to make his ex-wife see how much better he's doing is to get a shot of a man sucking his dick. And there's nothing much gayer than having your last name be Boy Man. So, I mean, other than Larry Lady Boy, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, you got you two should totally fuck. Uh, Bruce, would you be interested in fucking Jack McKinnon while Red Band fucks his girlfriend? Hey. hey. Where did it become that he fucks me? Listen, man, you don't like you said you don't like buttholes, so Bruce is down with anything. Fuck yeah, totally. There's nobody that owns that You'll pair of denim you know? shorts he was wearing that doesn't love anal. <laughs> they make sure they, 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 they you want these Levi's shorts that go above your knee. Do you love anal? And if the answer is no, they're like, you gotta go get Wranglers. You know? yeah. <laughs> You're required to steal the denim shorts usually, unless you have a barbed wire. <laughs> yeah, I brought my Hot Rod 5000 too. Your girl's in love. Perfect. Yeah, wow. That? That's, that's boner pills right there. Oh, okay. Hot Rod 5000. Yeah. It's pills. what this program's brought to you by, not officially, <laughs> but it was what fuels Red Band. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Hey, Snorter, would you be willing to snort uh, some uh, <laughs> Hot Rod 5000? No, no, would you snort, would snort a boner pill? There's only one left. Have you ever snorted a boner? I haven't, but I'd like to see what it <laughs> Wow. Are you 21? No. Do you want to be? <laughs> there goes Jeff McKinnon, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. At Wicked Comedy on the show. Fuck yeah. She waited for love, but love was with a bisexual. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. He loves blowing dudes. She's waiting for love, he's waiting for a hole of some sort. <laughs> I, just saw them, I just saw them give each other a kiss on the lips when he got back on there. Oh, nice. Very wow. swapping comments. Just like everything's cool. Dude, bisexual is when you, when you have sex and then, then you say goodbye, right? Yeah. Well, it's oh. like we just fuck pay bye. Oh, Polly, you are unbelievable tonight. <laughs> also, Polly. All right, I think we have about time for about one more out of the bucket name. Let's see what's going on here. Let's see what we got. Put your hands together for Sarah Weinshank, everybody. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What's up, everyone? Yeah. Anyone eat raisins? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> One of the only adults I know who eats raisins. Right? Like, after five years of age, no one's like, I want a snack. Let me have a raisin. Let me have a handful of raisins. Because you're still fucking hungry. You know what I mean? The raisins are weird because, like most other dried fruit, it's just called what it is after the word dry, like dried apricots, dried cherries, dried cranberries. Some like uppity French person was like, we're giving to kids in raisins. <laughs> and it's stuck. It's weird, like the only other fruit that's not called dried what it is is plums. <laughs> it's weird. I hate picky eaters that are children. Nothing's worse than a picky ch child eater, except for their, their parents that caters to them. You know what I mean, because life's hard. Like your kid, if they don't want to eat tomatoes, let them peel that shit off. Cause life's hard. 
You know? <laughs> they don't, it's weird. It's like, just take off the onions, okay? This life's hard. There's lots of challenges. All right. Heck yeah. You have a lot of food jokes. I know. But I was like, because I'll, I don't know. I was like on the fence. I was like, do I want to do food again? And then I was like, yeah, I do, I do. But I have other jokes too. But lately I've been like in a real food thing right now. Yummy. That's awesome. But remember, she did do Jimmy Buffett at the last show. Yeah, right. Yeah, it wasn't food. Do you really like raisins a lot? I hate raisins. Yeah, raisins? Yeah. Why? Because they're disgusting. Like, no one wants raisins. Like, I'd much rather have a chocolate chip. You know? Yep, I have a bowl of raisin bran every morning. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. Yep. It's a ringing endorsement for raisin bran right now. Really <laughs> Free advertisement. Yeah. I have another bowl at night, too. I have two bowls a day. Really? <laughs> have you been smoking hot lately, Patreon? Uh, I'm sober right now, but when I get home, I have a smoke down. Any, uh, any deep thoughts or insights from uh, Yeah, yeah. The most difficult question to answer is how can we all simultaneously be at the center of our own universe? There you go. Mm. Sarah, when you're writing raisin <laughs> jokes, like, are, are you looking at raisins? Are you Googling raisins, like, for inspiration or anything like that? You right. know, I was actually hanging out with some children babysitting, but I didn't want to say that because we didn't stand up, you know? Right. So I was babysitting and I was watching this, like, little girl just eat, like, handfuls of raisins, and I was just like, that's foul. If I was hungry, I would have a snack. I wouldn't just be like taking a handful of raisins and like pouring it in my mouth. Right. Because they sort of are just rotten grapes, right? Yeah, it's like a bad taste. It's not even like sesame. It's just taste. What are prunes again? Prunes are dried plums. Oh. You like Dr. Pepper? Yeah. Not really. I like diet Dr. Pepper. Interesting. Yeah. I'm drinking right now. <laughs> Hey, you already have a girlfriend on this podcast. Hey. And a boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get rid of the boyfriend with this girl. Just, yeah. hey, just keep them both for now until you figure out which one you really like more. Okay. Yeah, play both sides. Norton over there. Yeah. Um, Raisins taste good cookies, too. Do you babysit a lot? Is that a lot of your day, is babysitting? I mean, do you have a lot of material that comes from, like, watching... It's um, I spend like a few days a week babysitting during the afternoons. Uh, yeah, kids, but then, but not too much kids, because I don't want to isolate people if I just talk about kids. You know, not everyone has them. But everybody does have food. Yeah, it's <laughs> true. Yeah. yeah. Some people I can't wait till she does it. oxygen jokes. <laughs> <laughs> really connect with the people. What's just air? You know? Sleep. Make some noise if you if you sleep once in a while. No, that's fun. <laughs> uh, well, there you go. Sarah Weinshank, everybody. Uh, keep on getting Sarah. The regular, regular, uh, always bringing her out. Torture belt on as well. What's that? She had a torture belt on of some sort. Oh, interesting. I missed that. Patriot, we notice you don't have a belt of any kind, no kind of superhero, uh, no real uh, weapons or anything, huh? No, no. I can throw it out like this, go... <laughs> 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 uh, there's got to be 15 to 16 seven-year-olds that are scared of that noise. <laughs> <laughs> the lasers that must I can crack out. this fiberglass on your head. Oh, wow. Oh, shit. You're not know, playing in his voice. Whoa. Whoa. What was that? What was that accent? Yeah, <laughs> that's Houston Hillbilly. Yeah, you'd be calling your lawyer real quick. You'd be suing me. Is that is that a threat? No. Okay. I like your wrist, but don't cross the lines. Wow, there you go. Wow. Wow. Just got Wait, where? Yeah, page. I was gonna say, where is it? Let's find it. It's right here. <laughs> that's the line. The line that he can't cross. <laughs> he physically up the step. You're my favorite kid fucking superhero, no doubt. <laughs> no, no, Green Lantern, then you. Well, it's time for the regular portion of our show where now it's uh, two uh, lovely young ladies um, regularly do a new 60 seconds each week on the show. Uh, no particular order. Um, let's do tonight first. Uh, Kimberly Congdon, everybody. Here she is. <laughs> Um, I want to talk
about something a little serious tonight. Uh, I caught my little sister sexting, and I wouldn't be so upset about it, but she's 12 years old. Yeah, it's true. And I'm like, what are you sending? Like, is she sending pictures of herself completely naked? Like, yeah, just got a Brazilian. Kayla, you don't even have armpit hair. You know? She's like, she's being really bad. She she offered our sister, our other sister, for a threesome. And I'm like, you, you can't even have a twosome or a onesome. <laughs> I'm like, Haley, mom and dad are going to kill you. They can never see this. So I did what every other good big sister would do. I helped her download Snapchat. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, old man. Yeah, Snapchat's something that you send like a photo or a video, and it disappears after a short period of time. So you're like, oh, look at her tits. Oh, it's and gone. Like Are you already friends with her little breath. sister on Snapchat? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a that's a very uncomfortable material to kind yeah. of go down. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's well, like Penn it really happens. Finest. I feel like I had to make a joke about it because I was. It was scary. Maybe not make her 12, because that's like... She is 12. She I know. is sexting. What? It's crazy, yeah. Yeah, this is probably one of those that it would be funnier if it wasn't true. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's not disturbing. Especially when you start talking about her pussy hair and stuff, and it's just like, all right, she's 12 years old, and you're talking about some pussy hair, and now I'm in my head yeah. thinking about a 12-year-old pussy. Right. Oh. Well, you, aren't like you usually... Old? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know. Normally, yeah. Brian wants to decide when he gets to think of a hairless 12 year old person. <laughs> he doesn't want anybody telling him. Yeah, he's not a if there's grass on the field, play ball guy. He's yeah. a if there's a field, play ball. Right. <laughs> yeah, 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 at least on your first period. Yeah. 12 year olds yeah. love playing in fields. So, yeah. So, yeah. Sandlot's uh -huh. fun. <laughs> well, did, you, did you say that she invited you to do a threesome? No, she, like, okay, she's really innocent. She doesn't actually, like, hook up with boys and she was just trying to impress an older boy and so she thought that was like the cool thing to say was to like have a threesome. Twelve years old she's saying this. She's already a yeah. fucking cock tease. <laughs> Dude, what were you a virgin until you were 21? Jeez. When did you oh, start having sex? Uh, I was 17. All right. Well, you need to have a serious talk with your sister before she can physically get pregnant. Yeah. You need to talk to her mom about this, your mom about this I shit. I did. She told me to make a joke about that. Your mom? <laughs> She's like, oh my god, Kimberly, you have to do that in your freaking comedy. See, I think maybe if you would have done the mom accent I while talking it. about the little sister pussy. Replace the mom part with the pussy part. There you go. Oh, okay. Kimberly Kongman, Thank everybody. You. Well, there's something new and different. Sandy, I love this look that you have. Yeah. It's like the dude like Belushi. <laughs> Very Rick Ross on the beard. That's what I was going for. Yeah. yeah. Right. I drink a lot of rosé, too. Our second comedian, as always, uh, regular here since episode one, Sarah Mostajabi, everybody. <laughs> so nice. I'm not ready to be a mom. Uh, I'm not ready to wake up angry every day. Um, I've been throwing up every day for like 20 years. I'm not ready to like give up all that hard work. <laughs> yeah, fucking that's where you know where I'm going. <laughs> you know, my mom told me, uh, she said, Sarah, whatever you do, don't have kids. You're just going to fuck them up. Uh, and I said, well, you just, you, what, you don't want to like pass down the tradition or <laughs> have you to be nice. I'd be afraid of what kind of mom I would be. I was driving through Burbank the other day because I hate myself. Um, and I saw a mom carrying a tiny little dog and dragging a child on a leash. That would definitely be the kind of mom I would be. I've only had one uh, thought or dream where I was a mom, and uh, basically in the dream there was a baby in a crib. I put a piece of paper on its face and seen. That was, uh, that's what me being a mom is like. So it's just not going to go well. If I lay any eggs, I'm going to step on them. Do you get where I'm going? <laughs> Who says you have to keep it, right? <laughs> Control out the way. There you go. It's the Anthony, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
It was just a matter of time before she started doing comedy. You know? yeah, I, while we're on the subject of Casey Anthony, though, I, I think there's still a chance that Kate killed herself, you know? <laughs> no, I mean, it's like Michael Vick's dogs. Like, those dogs killed themselves because he wouldn't let them fight anymore. Right. But, maybe not. Very young suicide, that would have been. Uh, yeah. Then plus the self burial is hard to explain. <laughs> talent is talent. That's what things get really. Sure. Andy, I just I love your smile. So like this entire podcast is just me enjoying your smile. Oh, thank you. Thank it's you. so amazing. She's buttering you up, man. I Sandy you loves ever had a pregnancy scare before? No. You I... want one? Nice. No, wow. I'm barren. <laughs> Just so you know, that was the hottest thing every dude in this room heard. Like, what? Oh yeah, don't pull out. Got it. Uh, yeah. I have one of those permanent little coat hanger things in my survey, so... Yeah. That, that doesn't sound comfortable at all. No. I like the bit that you had uh, with the holding the dog and dragging the baby, is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah, that you, you make sure you emphasize that, because like that almost sounded like like how it was supposed to sound. Yeah. You know, so you know what I mean? I was like, oh, but wait, she said it the opposite. Aha, that's funny. But yeah. you, you know what I mean? Like you kind of just kind of floated over that and went to the next one, but really emphasize that that's a funny joke, especially in this city. You know? yeah. yeah. I legit I legit saw that and I was so confused by it. Uh, it'd definitely be the exact kind of parent I am. I wouldn't own a carriage, but I definitely would own one of those little dog carriers. Patriot, what's your input? Well, let me say something to Sarah. Um, I, re I recently watched the film The Kids Are All Right, you know, with uh, Annette Benning and Julianne Moore. They were like a lesbian couple raising kids. Would you see yourself having kids that way or with a guy? Oh, I don't see myself having children. I think that's what this whole bit was about. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much what it was all about. You'd be a great mother. Sarah, I know you, I know you <laughs> for four months now. You'd be the best mother. <laughs> You're crazy, Patriot. This is why, yeah, this really is why I don't like really dudes coming. It coming. sounded like he was saying more, though, you'd be a great lesbian parent. No, 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 either way. I mean, you could, she had it with a guy, too. I mean, I just, I see you being great with kids. I just see it. You should start hanging out with her more, Patriot. Yeah, I think we found a love, love made on Kill Tony yeah. tonight, everybody. Yeah. There she goes. Sarah Mostajabi, everyone. Uh, so much fun tonight. Blast. Yeah, a, lot of, a lot of great talent out there in other rooms. <laughs> hey, I got my money on Bruce Boyman. He's my he's my he's my pick of the night as uh, my my MVP. He's, I love a guy chasing his dreams. Yeah, he's yeah, I do too. The boy man. <laughs> uh, what do you guys got coming up? Anything to promote? Rick Ingram, you're Rick Ingram on Twitter, which is one of my favorite Twitters to follow. Always funny. And yep, awesome. I'm on Twitter and uh, Embrace the Hate Podcast, and uh, that's pretty much it for me. Sandy? Same thing. I'm uh, Rick Ingram on Twitter. <laughs> Sandy Danto on no, Twitter. No, I'm Sandy Danto on Twitter. Thank you. The regular ladies are generally confident Sarah dresses on Twitter. Comic Patriot on Twitter, one of the mainframe, main social media responders of the show. So uh, I'm Tony Hinchcliffe, Red Band. And I'm Red Band. You'll see us uh, October 31st in San Diego, American Comedy Co. Thank you, guys. Woo!